All of us find various things to collect over the years. Some things may be useful, while others are just plain weird. The 1970s especially offered up some pretty unique collections for both kids and adults that you probably haven't thought about in years. So let's rewind the clock and revisit some of these popular collectibles from the 1970s. In the 1970s, listening to the music of your choice in your car meant you probably had an 8-track player. This was important because it was the first step in making music portable, and people began to collect their own personalized 8-track tape music collections. Often this was done by being a member of a mail-order music club like Columbia House, which offered up 8-tracks for pennies. How many of you had Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon or Kiss's debut album in your collection? The holy grail of collectible toys seemed to be the original figures created by Kenner for the blockbuster hit Star Wars, released in 1977. Almost a year later, the first four toys shipped directly to Lucky Early Birds were Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, and R2-D2 and they promised that more characters were on the way. Kenner would go on to sell 40 million toys in the first year, and that success continued the following year. This meant many of us were collecting Star Wars figures. If you still have an original Darth Vader or Obi-Wan Kenobi with a double telescoping lightsaber, then you may be sitting on a gold mine. Recollection Road is proud to partner with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about digitizing your family's irreplaceable memories, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection for an incredible 55% off. Remember these fabric calendars that used to hang in the kitchen? Moms and grandmas alike loved to have a collection of these to swap out, but because they were specific to each year, you could only use them once before they went into a keepsake box. These calendars were cheap and sold at discount stores everywhere, so most of us remember seeing them often. Today, many of the kids who grew up with these fabric calendars are finding and preserving them because of the fond memories they brought growing up. Novelty card sets produced by the Topps Trading Card Company became a fun collectible for kids in the 1970s in the form of wacky packages. These were a spoof on popular commercial products that had kids cracking up as they collected them. Inside a package was a hard stick of gum, a series checklist, and two wacky stickers. They were perfect for plastering on school notebooks because the artwork was eye-catching and the humor was sometimes crude, which was a sweet spot for young collectors. There's no doubt that the 1970s had lots of fashion statements. One of those may have been a collection of belt buckles. You might even have some of these big and funky belt buckles still around somewhere. The 1970s ushered in a new affinity for belt buckles, and manufacturers quickly took notice, producing new artwork and designs during this decade. Belt buckles could not only be found in stores, but they were also sold through mail-order magazine ads, at concerts and festivals, and by pop-up vendors on the streets, making belt buckles more than just an iconic 1970s fashion accessory, but also a highly collectible keepsake for many. For homemakers in the 1970s, a Pyrex set was a must-have for any busy kitchen. This durable cookware featured patterns that included Homestead, Old Orchard, Autumn Harvest, and Old Town Blue, among others. In the 1970s, casseroles were all the rage, as they were basically an all-in-one dish that made serving up dinner a little easier for working moms. So it's no surprise that Pyrex became so collectible. Just seeing this vintage cookware reminds us of home cooking and the memories made in the kitchen during this time. The 1970s was when Playboy magazine was at its peak, and many men during this time had a huge stash of the adult magazines. Not only did they offer up photos of some of the most beautiful women in the world, but it also had articles worth reading and interviews with some of the most influential people of the time. The November 1972 issue featuring Swedish model Lena Soderberg is the highest selling issue of the magazine, with over 7 million copies sold. For men in the 1970s, having a large collection of Playboy magazine wasn't unusual, and finding your dad's stash of nudie magazines was a milestone for many adolescent boys. 
How many of these did you have back in the 1970s? Troll dolls became collectible with both children and even some adults during this time. They were small plastic dolls with a head full of colorful hair that was fun to style. Originally, they were created in 1960 by a Danish woodcutter, and they gained worldwide popularity, which extended into the 1970s. The extensive line of different troll characters lent itself to making them highly collectible. A trip to the grocery store often meant checking out and being issued a set of S&H green stamps that could be collected and then cashed in for various household products. It was a loyalty program that had parents, often with the help of their kids, licking and pasting stamps into a booklet. S&H green stamps were fairly widespread, but there were some stores that may have used blue chip or gold bond stamps too. Perusing the product catalog and then choosing something you wanted let you know how many stamps you needed to collect, and then it was all about being a loyal customer to reach your goal. If you've stuck around this long, don't worry, there's still more. But I wanted to let you know we have some retro merchandise available too. Just click the link in the description to head on over to the store. How many of these crocheted blankets did you own in the 1970s? For many households, these scratchy blankets were not only used to dress up the back of a couch, but crocheting was also a popular hobby during this time. That's probably why you had so many of these blankets in every room. The most popular design was something called a granny square blanket that added a splash of color to any earth tone 1970s living room. The 1970s saw a revival of many Americana and patriotic themes, partly because of the celebrations surrounding the U.S. Bicentennial in 1976. Colonial furniture especially, with its roots in early American craftsmanship, aligned well with this renewed sense of national pride in American history. Furniture manufacturers took note, and they cranked out tons of colonial furniture during this time, and consumers filled their houses with it. The chunky furniture was well built, and very heavy, and just seeing it transports you back to the 1970s. There were many trinket-type collectibles that were pretty popular during this time, but one of the more unusual ones were tiny souvenir spoons. And it wasn't just a few, it was normally a whole collection that was displayed on a wooden rack hanging on the wall. It was one of those collections that you would use to document your own travels, and the tiny spoons could be found pretty much anywhere you went. Collectible spoons are still around, available online and in souvenir shops, but they are not as popular or widespread as they once were in the 1970s. If you step back in time and revisit a 1970s kitchen, one thing you would notice is that people were infatuated with mushrooms. All sorts of mushroom-themed decor was collected back then. Plates, glassware, curtains, wallpaper, mushrooms were everywhere. I guess the earthy aesthetic of the 1970s made them the perfect fungus to represent the decade. Embracing nature was a big part of the 1970s, and mushroom inspiration found itself into just about every corner of the kitchen. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and make sure to check the description of this video for links to pick up a t-shirt and sign up for the newsletter. Recollection Road and Legacy Box both believe it's important to preserve the past. If you're like me, there's a box of your family's treasured home movies and photos tucked away somewhere, and Legacy Box can help you preserve them digitally. The process is a simple and safe solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or to the cloud. Just send in your Legacy Box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Legacy Box is trusted by over 1 million people, and it's all done right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. Thank you to our loyal Patreon supporters listed here. Visit patreon.com slash recollectionrow to join the club. As always, thank you so much for watching.